You've made it to module three, where we're talking all about biomarkers. We'll be covering what biomarkers are, the different types, and just introduce you to them. So biomarkers are a measurable indicator that reflects the state of biological processes. So just like heart rate, blood pressure, and body temperature are, they're essential for monitoring overall health. So reproductive biomarkers provide critical insights into the body's hormonal activity. So as hormones, estrogen, and progesterone fluctuate, so do the physical and mental symptoms we can experience. And these are our reproductive biomarkers. Estrogen can stimulate the lining of the uterus, your endometrium, to build up and thicken. Estrogen also causes the cervix to get softer and move higher up on the body, closer to ovulation, and cause the glands of the cervix to produce stretchy, clear, or slippery mucus. Hormone progesterone stabilizes and nourishes this lining and causes the cervix to produce a thick, dense mucus, which plugs the cervix, blocking sperm's access. Progesterone also raises the metabolism and the resting body temperature slightly. So the biomarkers you'll be seeing over your cycle are menstruation, dryness, cervical mucus, cervical position, and your basal body temperature. And we'll go over each of these a little bit more in detail. So menstruation is our first biomarker, and it is a vital sign of health for women at reproductive age. And it's the shedding of the uterine lining, which built up over the previous cycle due to the influence of estrogen and progesterone. Now this is important because the quality of the bleed, so your period that you're getting, it reflects the sufficiency of hormonal levels in the previous cycle. So if you experience heavy periods, clots, or really light periods, that can tell us what is going on with your hormones. Now dryness can occur at two separate times in your cycle. After your period, it can represent an unstimulated, immature follicle and low hormone activity. So you can be dry due to the residual progesterone from the last cycle. And if it's after ovulation, an abrupt shift from wetness to dryness is evidence that ovulation occurred and progesterone is now being made. So this continued dryness indicates high progesterone. You'll learn throughout this course that cervical mucus is one of the most important biomarkers and the change from menstruation to dryness to moist signifies the beginning of the development of the follicles. So one will be chosen to mature and produce an increasing amount of estrogen, which affects the cervical mucus that you are seeing. So we'll see stretchy, clear, slippery, or lubricative, very fluid or watery, or abundant mucus and sensation. So this represents high estrogen and approaching ovulation. Cervical position is a biomarker that some people choose to use and some people don't choose to use. You could make it through just fine using your cervical mucus and your basal body temperature, but cervical position can give you a lot more info, especially if one of those markers isn't working very well for you due to some illness or trouble tracking your cervical fluid. So with cervical position, the cervix responds to changes in hormones. The cervix is softer, higher, and open around ovulation, which is the small window of fertility, and this helps sperm to pass through. And during the rest of the cycle, it's closed and lower. Basal body temperature is the second biomarker that is really important and can help you confirm ovulation. So after ovulation occurs, the empty follicle turns into that corpus luteum, which we've talked about, and this corpus luteum produces progesterone. Progesterone raises the body's temperature just slightly, so you'll see a raise of about 0.5 to 1 degree Fahrenheit or 0.3 to 0.6 degrees Celsius. So these hormonal shifts are the foundation of the menstrual cycle. Changes in estrogen and progesterone levels influence these changes and allow you to recognize these hormonal shifts. Tracking temperature, cervical mucus, and cervical position can help identify these shifts and ovulation and help you to better understand your cycle and manage your health. So learning to recognize and chart these biomarkers are the basis of fertility awareness. So it's gonna help you recognize hormonal shifts, cycle phases, your fertile window, your approximate ovulation date, It'll help you create a health history chart, helps us recognize hormonal and other health problems to bring up to medical providers, and can help with fertility management. That's it for this lesson, and in the next lesson, we're going to be covering where to chart.